What's up, guys? Uh, John here from Cape Town. I have decided to work from home today because I've got such an incredible view. I can see all the way into the future. And also, I'm only in Cape Town for another six weeks or so till I relocate to Dubai. So I'm taking in uh, every little bit of joy that the city is giving me right now after 10 years of living here. I wanted to share today a story about capital. And I have been fascinated about watching my own life develop um, and watch my social capital increase because of my writing books and being in front of audiences around the world. And the sort of social capital that I've developed has really changed my life in such a major way. Um, social capital is how the world sees you and how um, you're perceived by the outside world. And never in history have we had a better time to be able to develop the social capital for ourselves utilizing social media. Now, obviously, the most famous people that are, have so much social capital are the Kardashians, and they've done incredibly well with developing the social capital and the social capital gives you a lot of influence and so wherever you go whatever you do uh, people are expecting you and receiving you differently and I've just watched this happen in my life because just from five years ago to now my life has dramatically changed and the social capital has really uh, made a big difference in the way I move through the world. The second type of capital is, oh, so my question around that is, what are you doing to develop your social capital? A lot of people boo-boo social media. They say that it's so bad for you. People are stuck on their phones and and it's, it's just people showing their best lives and nothing else, creating so much um, anxiety and depression amongst people. And all of those are valid. I don't want to take anything away from them because I do think anything utilized in its extreme way is never going to be good. But other than that, how are you building your level of influence and social capital utilizing free tools like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and LinkedIn like we've never had before? If you think back into the 90s, 80s, 70s, you always had to have a newspaper or a television that was interested in what you had to say. And so there are very few people that had social capital. Today, a lot of people do. And so the question is, what are you doing to develop your social capital? What are you doing to develop your tr level of trust online because ultimately people want to trust you before they can engage with you. The second type of capital, which is something that we speak about all the time around the world, is money capital. And I think that a large number of people are scared of money. And, and I say this because I myself have had a tumultuous relationship with money. But really what I've discovered is that every time I ask somebody if they want to be successful and want to have money, the answer is always yes. But then my question is, how much money do you want and what do you want to do with it? And then nobody knows. And so the question there is, is that are you as intentional? Are you as specific as possible when it comes to how much money you want to make, what value you want to exchange for it? How often are you revisiting that number that you're expecting to come into your life? Do you give the money itself an intention of what you wanted to do? And so when you say you want to build money capital or you want to have money, be specific like you're wanting to go on holiday. If you're wanting to go on holiday, you're very specific about where you're going, what you pack, when you arrive, when you leave, have you got the visas? Money's exactly the same thing. So building social capital. The third thing that I've been seeing is in my own life is time capital because I've got time now on my hands. I am busy, um, but like right now, it is uh, 12 o'clock on a Monday and I'm done for the day. I had a couple meetings online. I've had a few emails to respond to. I'm speaking later during the week. I've already prepped for that. I've released my book a few months ago. I've done all the PR, but now I've got time. And the question now comes is, why do people not look at time as something they build capital for? And so most of us are stuck in these incredibly busy lives, traveling and working. And But we really don't give ourselves the opportunity to design a life that's based on time capital. And so... For me, now I've got so much time, the biggest, not now the second problem is, what do you do with so much time? So now it's like, okay, I go cycling, I read, I travel, and so really to become okay with what do you do with the time, but becoming very specific about it, and that's why I'm really looking forward to going to Dubai, because with so much time in my hands, because I've designed it like that, and let's not forget that time and money don't equal each other, so you don't have to work that hard to make that much money. If that was the case, the people that are digging up the sides of the roads, putting in plumbing pipes would be the Baltic billionaires of the world, and they're not. So... 
moving to Dubai will give me access to many different experiences just a few hours away. So I could be in Switzerland or Slovenia or Bali just in a matter of hours, which is really what I'm looking forward to, to utilize my time better. And ultimately, health capital. And uh, if you've ever been sick, you'll know that no matter how much influence you have, how much money you have and how much time you have, it becomes absolutely pointless. And this goes back to the fact of us understanding what are you putting in your body, not only in as far as food is concerned, but in as far as what information you're putting in your body, because the information that's coming in your body, it's redesigning the cellular structure in your body. This cellular structure is a representation of our belief systems and the stuff that we're putting in our bodies. And I'm a plant-based human being for the very simple reason that if you believe that everything is light and energy, and if you do think about that, then the animals that are being tortured in those factory farms are tortured beings that we are ingesting into our systems, making us part and parcel of that torture and part and parcel of that pain. So when you are putting things into your head and into your body, ask yourself a very simple question. Did this cause pain for anybody? And if it caused pain for anybody or anything, don't engage with it. Just don't because it's not fair to your being and it's not fair to those beings, you know, like slavery 150 years ago, child um, labor 35 years ago, all these things that were normal back then really are not normal now. In fact, they're quite disgusting. And I think that this animal factory farming that we've become so used to also will seem disgusting in the future. So for me, the, the point of the video really was my own fascination with the capital that I've developed through influence and through social capital, the, the fact that I'm now understanding how to utilize the energy of money and being very specific about it and being very intentional about it. And then obviously time capital, something that we haven't been taught that is something really that cool to have because if, what are you doing? You're lazy. What are you doing on a Monday at 12 o'clock sitting on the beach? What sort of life do you have? That all thing needs to be redesigned. And then obviously health capital and we're becoming so much more in tune with our bodies. We've got access to more information. So there's no excuse really for us to carry on being sick, carry on going to doctors, carry on taking medication when we really do understand that the cause of all our ailments is an emotional state as well as the crap that we're putting into our bodies and our minds. Anyway, from a beautiful Cape Town, I thought I wanted to share that. Ciao.